actually get to the people who did the work up here in just a minute. Uh, two things that I did want to mention though. When this sort of started to roll down and you started seeing everything that's on the table, and we saw it last week, the two things that I see the most out of this is these products here are clearly marketed toward our youth or kids. If we want to raise the age to 18, let's call them what they are. We're going to consider them to be kids. These products are marketed toward kids. And then just the way they're packaged, they're clearly here to deceive or hide the product and make it look like something else. So for every parent out there, which I'm a parent, you should be concerned. Uh, for every kid, you should be concerned. For every school administrator, you should be concerned. For every business owner who's employing people or doing a job out there, you should be concerned because this is floating around and could be in your environment. And what effect does it have on, on our youth or whoever's consuming the product? We see a lot in our line of work, uh, in police work. I've seen more than I really care to in my 27 years of doing this job. But I will tell you this, every problem has to start somewhere. Let's just use addiction. People are going to slough this off, saying, hey, it's just THC, this and that. Every problem has to start somewhere. This, is a, this looks like a heck of a starting point to me uh, for what we see in the street. It just expounds to other things down the road. But again, I want to keep things brief. I do want to mention I am extremely proud of our officers and everybody else that was part of the task force for the job that they did. I mean, we're not exactly overflowing with officers right now. For the They found the time and the effort to put this case together, and this was not an easy task on their behalf to do all this work that went with it. Uh, they're only carrying a full caseload back there in property crimes, so and to get this done, I'm extremely proud of you guys. Um, this will get overlooked in many contexts, and it shouldn't. The time and the effort in this is A+, plus, and I appreciate you, Lieutenant Rise, and thank you very much. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Kim Rison, uh, supervisor of our property and financial crimes division. Um, so back in September, I attended some training put on by the Secretary of State's office. And during that training session, uh, we were showed some slides and saw some of this stuff. And I quickly realized, looking at these items and these products, I was like, oh my gosh, your kid could be sitting at home with this stuff. It could be laying over in the corner of their book bag. You wouldn't have any idea. I mean, who would know that if you, looks like Doritos. So if you saw this bag sitting in your kid's bedroom or a teacher saw a kid at school, you would just assume they had Doritos. When in fact, it very well could be filled with the Delta H or some THC product or some other drug that they could hide in it. And we realized that that was a problem. And that was a problem here in the community. So we wanted to address that problem. So I asked Agent Jones if he could help me out and get some people together. And we did with ALE and HSI. And we went out and took us two different days to get through almost all of our tobacco and vape stores. But we went. And out of that, um, again, the 80, over 8,800 individual products, almost $50,000 worth of value of stuff, that we got out of those stores. And it ranged from everything that you see here. I mean, it was roach clips, grinders, bongs, the baggies, the actual THC candies and, and gummies, the hideaway cans. And while we were in those stores, it's when we realized also that they were selling products that were in violation of North Carolina General Statute 14401.20, which is defrauding drug and alcohol screening test with the U-Pass and the Xtreme stuff. So we talked to every one of the store owners we could get because a lot of the store owners weren't there. They had clerks. So we talked to them on the phone. We talked to the clerks. We provided them copies of the general statutes. And we went over this products and stuff with them about how this stuff is very confusing. Um, and I actually have some real, real products of some of these that you can actually compare to and see exactly how close these things are and how confusing it can be as a parent, a teacher, an employer, you may not know. I mean, if your kid is sitting there with that Doritos bag and you see it over in the corner and suddenly your kid happens to pass out and you have a medical emergency, what do you do? You, you have no clue that this may be a product that they have. And so this is about educating the community and educating the public of the dangers of some of this stuff and the dangers of how it is packaged and how it is marketed. Um, and again, we have some cans and stuff too. Um, you pick it up. It's like Morton salt. It's 
So if you see something around the house, your kid could be hiding something. Or somebody else could be hiding something. Pringles. Sounds like Pringles. And there are actually chips in these, so if you open it up, there's actually chips in them. So if you think your kid's not hiding something, here's a clue, they may be. It could be it's something like this. So that's, that was our purpose in going out and doing this. We wanted to educate the shop owners and the clerks. We wanted to educate the public through this. And the next time if we go back and these stores continue to do this, they will face criminal charges. So, and with that, it is my pleasure to introduce Secretary of State Elaine Marshall. Thanks, Kim. Thanks You're so welcome. much. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for attending this event today. It's a really important topic for parents, grandparents, kids, and our communities. My deepest appreciation to Lieutenant Kim Rison for your leadership and actions for what we're discussing today. And a big shout out to the officers of High Point um, and NC Alcohol Law Enforcement, Homeland Security, and my agents with the Secretary of State and the Anti-Counterfeiting Task Force. Kim has been one of our task force members almost since the beginning. It's been a long time back. Uh, and as you notice, this is an interagency cooperation. We can't do what we do without all the help of other law enforcement. Uh, and uh, we in North Carolina have, are very blessed to have good interagency cooperation. As North Carolina Secretary of State, I am the state's top trademark regulator. My agency is charged with protecting real brand names and trademark goods made and sold in North Carolina. When I first took on trademark enforcement more than two decades ago, it was something, I was a voice in the wilderness at that point among state regulators. Raising public awareness about counterfeits has been a years long, decade long, and ongoing process for me. I have three full-time trademark enforcement agents to cover the entire state. As you can guess, collaboration is necessary. It's a big state and there's a, a lot of activity, so collaboration is essential on our work to protect consumers. I established the North Carolina Anti-Counterfeiting Task Force in 2004 to help train law enforcement agents at the fine points of spotting counterfeit products and to coordinate uh, enforcement actions across traditional jurisdictional boundaries. The task force began with 10 members, and today it's grown to 172 officers representing enforcement agencies from all across the state, including right here at the High Point Police Department. Lieutenant Rison and the department are doing great work on that front. As you notice, she said, we just had a training on this uh, about a month ago, and here it is in your backyard. It probably was here longer, but the awareness of it uh, was not raised until this time. The enforcement actions here began the last two weeks are crucially important. Counterfeit products continue to be a nationwide issue and a nationwide enforcement priority. In August alone, Customs and Border Patrol officers received more than, received, seized more than 2,000 shipments coming into the country containing counterfeit goods with an estimated value of more than $159 million. The fakes keep coming and they pose a very real danger to our innovation-based economy and the countless jobs that are based upon that economy as well as to the health and safety of consumers. And the fact that many of these items here today are being marketed to kids is just really a double whammy. Counterfeiting is not a victimless crime. I repeat, it is not a victimless crime. Please think about what you're finding when you're buying counterfeit goods. Many times the profits from the sale of counterfeit goods and merchandise help fund the organization, help fund organized crime, help fund uh, trafficking in humans, and all kinds of folks that you would not want to be engaged with, terrorist organizations included. So once again, my hat's off to the work of all the officers and agents of these most recent actions. And if you don't think it's serious, just in our neighboring state of Virginia, within the last few months, a mother was charged with negligent murder. She did not pay attention to what she had in her child getting there. Her four-year-old child was taken to the hospital and died two days later. The national reports on poison control centers uh, where kids have gotten in in those states where these products might be legal, save for the counterfeit advertising aspect, uh, poison controls are seeing a tremendous escalation in the number of calls, folks. 
we can prevent these kind of things from happening. We can prevent the pipeline to other addictions. So we please invite you to look at uh, what we have up here. For us as counterfeit um, protectors, the fact that they are using brand name logos, pick out any one of them here, for an improper purpose is a violation of the law in addition to what the contents of the package might be. So that's where we there are double aspects under criminal law that these things can are in violation of. And um, I hope you'll be making business back to these places real soon to see if they've figured out what's what. So thank you very much. All right, and we do have time for a few questions. If you'll do me a favor before you ask your question, just let us know which individual you'd like to address it to, and we'll have them come up. Maria? I think this would probably be for Chief Stroud. Is there something in particular that alerted you to investigate these stores? Actually, that's probably a question from Lieutenant Robson. So, it, uh, get over here. so after the training, we realized that there probably were these products in our stores. And I actually asked one of the Secretary of State agents if he would, in an undercover capacity, go in some of the stores, and he did, and he confirmed that we did have these products here in the city, and that's when we organized the, the whole event. What about how many do you think it was per store-wise? Like how many items per store? Or total stores. So we went into 20, we did, we actually took products from 20 stores. Do you know what store, can you disclose that information, which stores gave you guys products? Uh, you we, guys can... <laughs> We're choosing to refrain from sharing the names of stores only because they're not facing criminal charges at this point. We went into the vast majority of the vape and tobacco shops in the city. Right. Um, do a Google search. You'll find. <laughs> they're being nice about it. I appreciate what they're saying. They're being nice about it. But like I told you, a problem's got to start somewhere. This stuff is being marketed toward kids, and it's being marketed to deceive. It's simple as that. You know, I'll let them run their investigation. I'd give them the names. <laughs> if it says tobacco, vape, and CBD, probably you're going to find something. All right. How do you plan on like, keeping the parents aware and students aware? Like, do you all plan on going to schools and having like, conversations with them and having different like, town halls? So our supervisor over our SROs um, is working on arranging some time for me to sit with the school administrators and the principals at the school and kind of do the same kind of show and tell with them so that they're aware as well. All right, he was, I saw your hand first. Lieutenant, of the 8,000 odd products y'all seized, what percentage had narcotics or drugs or something illicit inside them? Was it a very small percentage? Probably 10, 15% actually were the actual gummy products. The rest of them were either the baggies or the grinders or the push things or all the other products that are utilized along with it. So 10 to 15% had some sort of hallucinogen. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, I, it may be very unlikely, I'm not sure, but um, do you think that these products, which look very much like candies, could end up in Halloween bags? It's, it's possible that somebody mistakenly picks it up. I hope not because the, the gummy bags themselves are selling for 25 and 30 bucks. So I don't think it's going to be the regular thrown into the bag. The problem's going to be when the kids come home and they have their candy and it's all mixed with mom and something that mom, dad, somebody other adult in the house may have one of these products. And then suddenly they can't distinguish the difference and they grab these gummies and suddenly they've consumed the wrong thing. Okay, that's a good question. And now you have to respect mine. <laughs> I had to bring it out. Yeah. I haven't thought about that. You know, I was going to ask how, you know, we've seen the stories how, uh, there are people who thought, oh, there might be like fentanyl disguised as candy in what way, but this isn't that, right? It's just these stores are, you know, selling these items that. Right, right. These are THC Delta 8 products. However, they're not meant to be consumed by children. And they're also, even on the packaging, saying, do not consume the entire package. Well, if you know yourself, and especially like the Skittles, and if you give a kid the package, they're going to consume the whole package. That would send somebody to the hospital. Hey, but I keep, keep chiming in, I apologize. But you're tracking along the right way, yes. Well, that, that is not what they have, like the fentanyl candy looking items. That is a trend we are seeing in law enforcement. It's starting to pick up West Coast and moving itself this way. So you're not far fetched at all. Oh, yeah. And then 
and they, have you received any complaints from parents yet that maybe have you know sent it over along with also hospitals? You know, have you seen anyone in the hospital because of one of these recently? I've seen some news reports around us, but not here directly. Doesn't mean it hasn't happened. Just means that somebody didn't tell us. Yeah, I, I think you mentioned earlier that there's an increase in poison, poisons children essentially that have gotten a hold of these, uh, of these substances. Is could you give us a time frame and a scale of how many? Yes, I can if you give me a little bit of research. Uh, Arizona, where these products are legal, hold on. Okay, Banner, which is in Arizona, Banner Poisoned and Drug Information Center in Phoenix also reports increases in calls. In 2020, Banner took 127 calls regarding children under the age of five exposed to marijuana. In 2021, the group took 201 calls, while so far in 2022, they've received 150 calls. Rapidly escalating. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, plans to follow up with the stores particularly, you know, is that, is, what's that timeline look like as well? Um, we don't want to disclose because we don't want to give them a heads up that we're coming. We want it to be a surprise so that they don't have time to run hide the stuff in the car or send it to another neighboring store. But you will. Oh, yes. And there's always undercover possibilities. Oh, yes. You said there's no charges right now. What is the likelihood of charges coming? Is that pending follow-ups? That's going to be the pending follow-ups. So if we go back in a store that we have warned and given them written, written warnings, we've covered the law with them and gone over it, if they, in fact, restock with this type of merchandise, they will be charged. All right, back there, yes. Yeah, so the companies that are, um, I guess, being kind of brought into this or being posed as, going back to the, the trademark issue, are they taking any steps to kind of differentiate their, your actual real products versus these, you know, fakes? Well, the manufacturers aren't happy that this is going on, but they can't, I mean, if we find places that are manufacturing and printing this stuff, we'll go after those labs that are making and printing this stuff in the criminal elements. Um, but you, you can't shut down and, and make one, like Doritos, completely Frito later, completely redesign their package to try to distinguish it. So we're having to make sure the parents are aware to look. Because this is out there, as much as we take it off the streets in High Point, it's going to show up in the streets in Greensboro. It's going to show up in Thomasville. It'll show up in Lexington. You know, we'll, we'll keep taking it away here. For all we know, it, this could have been done in China. It could have been done in some other country. Uh, it could have been printed here in America and stuff. Yeah. We just don't, don't know, know until yet. we go further up the chain. And These are interesting weed tarts. Mm -hmm. And is there intention to follow up with other departments as well, like Greenboro, like, you know, all the other ones to make sure they're doing something similar? We will assist anybody that's looking for assistance. Yes? Just to be clear, um, they're not, none of the stores are being charged with anything. It's just a warning, hey, turn in your... your Correct. Okay. Yeah, part of the general statute involving criminal use of counterfeit trademark, which is 80-11.1, involves knowingly selling these products that are trademark violations. Now, most of us in general common sense know, but to go to court and for legal purposes, we want to make sure we had written warnings and written notifications on file so that they cannot say they didn't know. Is it fair to say some of them might not have known in general before you guys came there that this was illegal? That is what they said. Come on. <laughs> I'm just saying, that, that is what they said. And then just tips for parents right now, what are some key takeaways that maybe they can look out for when, you know, they're in their kids' room cleaning, stuff like that? How can they really differentiate differences? So pay attention to the packaging itself. Um, almost all of these packages, even the ones that look really, really close, if you look closely enough, most of them will actually somewhere say in the corner, THC or it may say California with a little marijuana leaf but so you're gonna to have to actually pick it up look at it and pay close attention to it other products that are used to hide the narcotics and, and other drugs and whatever purpose that you want to use 
turn them, twist them, see what's going on with them. And, and we'll let you guys play with them and, and see for yourself. Any right. more questions? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all for coming in. You're welcome to come check these out, do anything you like them. Thank you. 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 Thank you.